My very popular True Cost of Ownership series continues. This is where I look at a vehicle's true cost of ownership through depreciation, maintenance and repair costs, fuel economy costs, insurance, and whether you should buy one new or used. Now we're looking at the Mazda CX-9. This vehicle will depreciate 45% after five years of ownership and have a five-year resale value of just over $24,000. This chart here shows the expected depreciation on a CX-9 over the next 10 years of ownership. These results are for vehicles in good condition, averaging 12,000 miles per year, assuming a selling price of 43,124 when brand new. So you're deciding between new and used. If you purchase a used CX-9 that's two years old, you could save $13,700 compared to buying new and still have a relatively new model on your hands with useful life remaining. If you plan on keeping your CX-9 for three years, then your total cost of depreciation would be just over five grand. So what's the best model years to buy? Well, 2019 right now is the, the best model year value. With the 2019, you would only pay on average 68% of the price as new with 83% of the vehicle's useful life remaining. The 2020 and 2015 model years are also pretty good and provide a relatively good value. And that value is based on a number of factors, including its price as new, its current price, maintenance costs, and remaining years of overall predicted expenses. You can't ignore the cost of insurance. It's built in in some form or another. The average cost for insurance on a CX-9 is $1,470 a year, which adds up to just over $7,300 after five years of ownership. And these estimates are based on national averages for a 40-year-old with full coverage, good driving record, and good credit. Obviously, it'll just based on your demographics. Maintenance and repair costs have nothing to do with demographics. It'll probably be about $2,000 after five years on average. These expenses include scheduled maintenance, normal wear and tear, and expected repairs, excluding any free warranty work that's performed. If you plan on financing one, we're looking at $5,000 in financing costs after five years, assuming a 72-month loan with an APR of 4.75% and a 20% down payment if you decide to put money down and get a rate like that. The CX-9 gets on average 24 miles per gallon in fuel. That will cost about 7,500 bucks to you after five years of owning it or around 1,500 bucks a year going to the pump. And these estimates are based on recently collected national averages for fuel prices, assuming that you drive 12,000 miles per year, 55% of the time in the city, 45% on the highway. So those are the true cost of ownership numbers for a CX-9. If you're serious about one and want to get a free price quote in your area from a qualified dealer, check out quotes.everymandriver.com. It's a free service, quotes.everymandriver.com. Check it out. Here is your ever-shrinking list of manual transmissions available in America for 2022. It gets smaller every year. These are trucks, cars, and crossovers. Let's begin. BMW M3 and M4, Cadillac CT4 and 5V Blackwing, the Camaro and Spark are on there, the Challenger Ford Mustang, as well as the Bronco. Got a couple of Civics on here, an SI and Hatchback. The Veloster N, Elantra N from Hyundai. The Gladiator has a stick. So does the Wrangler, of course. The Kia Forte, Forte GT Manual. Mini Cooper hardtop and convertible. The Mitsubishi Mirage, as if you'd buy one. There's also the Mirage G4, again, if you're desperate. Nissan Z, Versa. The Porsche 718, 911. A couple of Subarus on here. Would love that. BRZ, Crosstrek Impreza, WRX. A couple of Toyotas as well, the Corolla and Hatchback, and Tacoma. So Corolla and Corolla Hatchback and Tacoma. And then Volkswagen offers the Golf, Golf GTI, and the Jetta. That is your list, the only list in America where you'll find vehicles available with a manual transmission. So hang on to it if you have one because you won't find many more as each year the list gets smaller and smaller. So these are the top five most expensive car parts and problems to repair on your vehicle. Number five, suspension problems. Your suspension system includes your tires, springs, and shock absorbers. It's designed to help you provide a smooth and safe ride on the road. If your suspension does go out, driving could become a safety hazard. Additionally, broken suspension could easily damage other parts of your cars. Suspension repair costs often come in around 1500 bucks or more. In some cases, you may only need to replace some small parts of the suspension, which could cost between 200 and 500 bucks. For more serious problems, you could easily see a price tag in the thousands. 
Number four, airbag replacement. This can be a major financial hit since most car crashes require additional repair work outside of just replacing the airbags. For most cars, the airbag replacement cost is around a grand per airbag. If multiple airbags go off, that number could go up pretty fast. Number three, transmission failure. The transmission transmits power from your engine to your drive shaft, making it a vital component in your vehicle. If it goes out, your car can't drive. Unfortunately, this important component comes with a hefty cost, as they all do. Transmission repair costs generally come in around a grand. However, in some cases, you need to replace the transmission. Transmission repair costs generally come in at around a grand. However, in some cases, you'll need to replace the transmission altogether. That's far more expensive. Expect to pay anywhere from fifteen hundred to six grand for a new transmission. Number two, a dead hybrid battery. I hope this doesn't happen to me since I have a Tesla Model 3. Hybrids are good for lowering your overall gas mileage and carbon footprint, making them a great choice for the eco-conscious. However, these cars typically run on a special battery on top of the standard small 12 volt. If a hybrid battery goes out, you have an expensive problem on your hands. Most hybrid batteries are expected to last between eight and 10 years. A new hybrid battery costs upwards of six grand. And by far the number one most expensive thing is engine failure is by far the most important component of your car. If it goes out, you may as well not even have a car. That's why engine maintenance is so important. A well-maintained engine can last you close to 200,000 miles. However, if something does go wrong or you fail to take care of it, we all do that every once in a while. It will uh, cost you a arm and a leg. A new engine will cost you between four and eight grand on average. This kind of cost may force you to decide whether you're still interested in keeping that car or whether it's time to junk it all together. As a good follow-up here, when is a good time to sell your damaged vehicle if it gets to that point? Well, a good rule of thumb on when to sell, if the cost of repairing your car is 50%, or more of your car's value, it might be time to put it on the market. Of course, you have to factor in other considerations as well, including how long will it take to repair your vehicle? How long can I go without a vehicle? And will I have to pay for a rental while I wait? If you happen to be in the market for a new vehicle, car or truck or SUV, and you want to get the best deals and quotes in your zip code, check out quotes.everymandriver.com. It's a free shopping tool. You type in the make, model, and your zip code, and qualified dealers will pop up on the right side of your screen. Just choose which ones you want to work with, and then you are on your way to getting a great quote in your area. If you don't find what you're looking for, if dealers don't pop up, just expand your zip code. It's a free service at quotes.everymandriver.com. Odds are your vehicle has a 1% chance of reaching 200,000 miles. Is that disturbing? Does that bother you? If you can get that many miles out of your car, that's pretty good investment, don't you think? Here are the longest lasting cars to reach 200,000 miles. Maybe yours is on the list. So my friends over at iccars.com did a study and sent it to me this morning uh, trying to figure out which cars last the longest, which cars best demonstrate longevity and reliability for their drivers. So they analyze more than or nearly 12 million cars to determine which vehicles are most likely to reach that 200,000 mile mark and beyond. Here are the key findings they discovered. Truck-based SUVs represent the majority of this list that you see here. Toyotas accounted for six of the top 10 vehicles with Land Cruiser and Sequoia dominating the competition. Sixth rank Avalon is the only sedan to make the list. Eighth ranked Highlander Hybrid is the only crossover on this list. In addition to the overall longest lasting list, they have a comprehensive study that also examined longest lasting pickup trucks, analysis by brand, and much more. Once you have a chance to review this, you can see the link below and see if some of these vehicles are something you want to look into in the near future. I guess I'm not surprised to see Land Cruiser and Sequoia and even the Suburban and maybe even the Expedition at the top of the list. Really happy to see the 4Runner because I used to own a 4Runner. The reason why I think these vehicles are on the list is because they're large um, family haulers and people who make that kind of investment and have a lot of people to carry around want to keep those vehicles as long as possible. My question to you is, how many miles do you have on your vehicle and what vehicle do you drive that has that many miles? Is it on this list? Should it be on this list? Leave it in the comment section below and do some bragging about how many miles you've put on your car. If you have a Land Cruiser, I'm not surprised. But if you have a, a Toyota Prius, I'm a little bit surprised in a way. Anyhow, that's it for today. You can find a link to this full study in the description below from iccars.com. See you next time. Adios. Thanks for watching. Please cr click subscribe and give us a thumbs up. See you next time.